Namaste, Dhanava Pranam, by the instruction and grace of our spiritual master, Om Vishnupad Paramahamsa Sripad Bhakti Madhava Puri Maharaj. We are here reading Srimad Bhagavatam. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Canto 3, The Status Quo. Chapter 2, Text 24. Manye suran bhagava tam strihadhi se samramba marga bini vishta chitan ye sam yuge chakshata tarkshaya putram am se suna bhayudam apatantam. I consider the demons who are inimical toward the Lord to be more than the devotees, because while fighting with the Lord, absorbed in thoughts of enmity, they are able to see the Lord carried on the shoulder of Garuda, the son of Tarksya, or Kasyapa, and carrying the wheel weapon upon his hand. Purport. The Asuras who fought against the Lord face to face got salvation due to their being killed by the Lord. This salvation of the demons is not due to their being devotees of the Lord. It is because of the Lord's causeless mercy. Anyone who is slightly in touch with the Lord, somehow or other, is greatly benefited, even to the point of salvation, due to the excellence of the Lord. He is so kind that he awards salvation even to his enemies because they come into contact with him and are indirectly absorbed in him by their inimical thoughts. Actually, the demons can never be equal to the pure devotees, but Uddhava was thinking in that way because of his feelings of separation. He was thinking that at last, uh, at the last stage of his life, he might not be able to see the Lord face to face as did the demons. The fact is that the devotees who are always engaged in the devotional service of the Lord and transcendental love are rewarded many hundreds and thousands of times more than the demons by being elevated to the spiritual planets where they remain with the Lord in eternal blissful existence. The demons and impersonalists are awarded the facility of merging in the Brahmajyoti effulgence of the Lord, whereas the devotees are admitted to the spiritual planets for uh, um, the devotees are admitted to the spiritual planets. For comparison, one can just imagine the difference between floating in space and residing in one of the planets in the sky. The pleasure of the living entities on the planets is greater than those who have no body and who merge into the molecules of the sun's rays. The impersonalists, therefore, are no more favored than the enemies of the Lord. Rather, they are both on the same level of spiritual salvation. Text 25. Vasu devasya devakyam jato bhojandra bandane. Chikshir Shur Bhagavan Ashya, Sam Ejena Biyachita. The personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Krishna, being prayed to by Brahma to bring welfare to the earth, was begotten by Vasudev in the womb of his wife Devaki, in the prison of the king of Bhoja. Purport. Although there is no difference between the Lord's pastimes of appearance and disappearance, the devotees of the Lord do not generally discuss the subject matter of his disappearance. Vedura inquired indirectly from Uddhava about the incident of the Lord's disappearance by asking him to relate Krishna Katha, or topics on the history of Lord Krishna. Thus Uddhava began the topics from the very beginning uh, of his appearance as the son of Vasudev and Devaki in the prison of Kamsa, the king of the Bhojas at Mathura. The Lord has no business in this world, but when he is so requested by the devotees like Brahma, he descends to the earth for the welfare of the entire universe. This is stated in Bhagavad Gita 4.8. Paratrinaya sadhunam vinascha duskritam dharma samsta panartaya sambhavami yuge yuge. Text 26. 
Tatonanda Brajam Ita, Pitra Kamsad Vipihita, Ekadasa Samastatra, Gudharchi Sabalho Vashut. Thereafter, his father, being afraid of Kamsa, brought him to the cow pastures of Maharaj Nanda, and there he lived for eleven years like a covered flame with his elder brother Baladev. Purport. There is no necessity of the Lord's being dispatched to the house of Nanda Maharaj out of fear of Kamsa's determination to kill him as soon as he appeared. It is the business of the Asuras to try to kill the Supreme Personality of Godhead or to prove by all means that there is no God or that Krishna is an ordinary human being and not God. Lord Krishna is not affected by such determination of men of Kamsa's class. But in order to play the role of a child, he agreed to be carried by his father to the cow pastures of Nanda Maharaj because Vasudev was afraid of Kamsa. Nanda Maharaj was due to receive him as his child and Yashoda Mai was also to enjoy the childhood pastimes of the Lord. And therefore to fulfill everyone's desires, he was carried from Mathura to Vrindavan just after his appearance in the present house of Kamsa. He lived there for 11 years and completed all his fascinating pastimes of childhood, boyhood, and adolescence with his elder brother, Lord Baladev, his first expansion. Vasudev's thought of protecting Krishna from the wrath of Kamsa is part of a transcendental relationship. The Lord enjoys more when someone takes him as his subordinate son who needs the protection of a father than he does when someone accepts him as the Supreme Lord. He is the father of everyone and he protects everyone. But when his devotee takes it for granted that the Lord is to uh, be protected by the devotee's care, it is a transcendental joy for the Lord. Thus, when Vasudev, out of fear of Kamsa, carried him to Vrindavan, the Lord enjoyed it. Otherwise, he had no fear from Kamsa or anyone else. Text 27. Purito vatsa parvatsams, charayan vyaharad vibhu, yamuno pavane kujad, vijasan kuli tangrupe. In his childhood, the Almighty Lord was surrounded by cowherd boys and calves, and thus he traveled on the shore of the Yamuna River through gardens densely covered with trees and filled with vibrations of chirping birds. Purport. Nanda Maharaj was a landholder for King Kamsa, but because by caste he was a Vaishya, a member of the mercantile and agricultural community, he maintained thousands of cows. It is the duty of the Vaishyas to give protection to the cows, just as the Kshatriyas are to give protection to the human beings. Because the Lord was a child, he was put in charge of the calves with his cowherd boyfriends. These cowherd boys were great rishis and yogis in their previous births, and after many such pious births, they gained the association of the Lord, and could play with him on equal level. Uh, they could play with him on equal terms. Such cowherd boys never cared to know who Krishna was, but they played with him as a most intimate and lovable friend. They were so fond of the Lord that at night they would only think of the next morning when they would be able to meet the Lord and go together to the forests for cow herding. The forests on the shore of the Yamuna are all beautiful gardens full of trees of mango, jackfruit, apples, guava, oranges, grapes, berries, palm fruit, and so many other plants and fragrant flowers. And because the forest was on the bank of the Yamuna, naturally there were ducks, cranes, and peacocks on the branches of the trees. While playing like a small child with his associates, the Lord killed many demons, including Agasura, Bakasura, Pralambasura, and Gardhabasura. Although he appeared in Vrindavan as just a boy, he was actually like the covered flames of a fire. 
as a small particle of fire can kindle a great fire with fuel, so the Lord killed all these great demons, beginning from his babyhood in the house of Nanda Maharaj. The land of Vrindavan, the Lord. This instruction is taken is taken up, especially by the followers of Lord Chaitanya, known as the Gaudiya Vaishnavas. And because the land is identical with the Lord, devotees like Uddhava and Vidura visited these places 5,000 years ago in order to have direct contact with the Lord. Visible or not visible, thousands of devotees of the Lord are still wandering in these sacred places of Vrindavan and all of them are preparing themselves to go back home, back to Godhead. Text 28. Kaumarim darshayam chestam, prekshaniyam vrajukasham, rudhan ivahasan mugda, valasimhava lokana. When the Lord displayed his activities just suitable for childhood, he was visible only to the residents of Vrindavan. Sometimes he would cry and sometimes laugh, just like a child. And while so doing, he would appear like a lion cub. Purport. If anyone wants to enjoy the childhood pastimes of the Lord, then he has to follow in the footsteps of the residents of Raja, like Nanda, Upananda, and other parental inhabitants. A child may insist on having something and cry like anything to get it, disturbing the whole neighborhood. And then immediately after achieving the desired thing, he laughs. Such crying and laughing is enjoyable to the parents and elderly members of the family. So the Lord would simultaneously cry and laugh in this way and merge his devotee parents in the humor of transcendental pleasure. These incidents are enjoyable only by the residents of Raja, like Nanda Maharaj and not by the impersonalist worshippers of Brahman or Paramatma. Sometimes when attacked in the forest by demons, Krishna would appear struck with wonder, but he looked on them like the cub of a lion and killed them. His childhood companions would also be struck with wonder, and when they came back home, they would narrate the story to their parents, and everyone would appreciate the qualities of their Krishna. Child Krishna did not belong only to his parents, Nanda and Yashoda. He was the son of all elderly inhabitants of Vrindavan and the friend of all contemporary boys and girls. Everyone loved Krishna. He was the life and soul of everyone, including the animals, the cows, and the calves. Text 29. Saiva Godanam Lakshmya. Niketam Sita Govrasham, Charayan Anugan Gopan, Ranad Venur Ariramat. While herding the very beautiful bulls, the Lord, who was the reservoir of all opulence and fortune, used to blow his flute, and thus he enlivened his faithful followers, the cowherd boys. Purport. As he grew to six and seven years old, the Lord was given charge of looking after the cows and bulls in the grazing grounds. He was the son of a well-to-do landholder who owned hundreds and thousands of cows. And according to Vedic economics, one is considered to be rich uh, by the strength of his store of grains and cows. With only these two things, cows and grain, humanity can solve its eating problem. Human society uh, needs only sufficient grain and sufficient cows to solve its economic problems. All other things but these are two, um, all other things but these two are artificial necessities created by man to kill his viable life at the human level and waste his time in things which are not needed. Lord Krishna, as the teacher of human society, personally showed by his acts, that the merchantile community or the Vaishyas should herd cows and bulls and thus give protection to the valuable animals. 
According to Smriti regulation, the cow is the mother and the bull is the father of the human being. The cow is the mother because just as one sucks on the breast of one's mother, human society takes cow's milk. Similarly, the bull is the father of human society because the father earns for the children, just as the bull tills the ground to produce food grains. Human society will kill its spirit of life by killing the father and the mother. It is mentioned herein that the beautiful cows and bulls were of various checkered colors, red, black, green, yellow, ash, etc. And because of their colors and healthy smiling features, the atmosphere was enlivened. Over and above all, the Lord used to play his celebrated flute. The sound vibrated by his flute would give his friends such transcendental pleasure that they would forget all the talks of Brahmanda, of Brahmananda. Brahmananda. And they would forget all talks of Brahmananda, which is so praised by the impersonalists. These cowherd boys, as will be explained by Shukadev Goswami, were living entities who had accumulated heaps of pious acts and thus were enjoying with the Lord in person and were hearing his transcendental flute. The Brahma Samhita 5.30 confirms the Lord's blowing his transcendental flute. Venum kvanantam aravinda dalayataksham baharvatam samashitam buddha sundarangam kandhar pakoti kamaniya vishesha sobam Govindam Adipurusham Tamahambajami. Brahmaji said, I worship Govinda, the primeval Lord, who plays on his transcendental flute. His eyes are like lotus flowers. He is decorated with peacock plumes, and his bodily color resembles a fresh black cloud, although his bodily features are more beautiful than millions of cupids. These are the special features of the Lord. So we'll end our reading here for today and continue from text 30 on when. Jai Shupad Bhakti Madhava Puri Maharaj Ki Jai. Jai. Jai Srila Prabhupada, Srila Guru Maharaj, Srila Guru Dev, Srila Acharya Dev, Srila Shanta Maharaj Ki Jai. Jai. Jai Rupanuga Guru Varga Ki Jai. Jai. Uh, glories to the assembled devotees, our glories to the worldwide devotees, Sama Bhakti Veda Rinda Ki Jai. Jai Navadweep Dam Ki Jai, Nishringapuri Dam Ki Jai, Mayapur Dam Ki Jai, Jagannath Puri Dam Ki Jai, Baladev Subhadra Jagannath Ju Ki Jai, Ganga Mayi Yamuna Mayi Ki Jai, Vrindavan Dam Ki Jai, Giri Govardhan Gupta Govardhan Dam Ki Jai, Shyam Kun Radha Kun Ki Jai, Tosa Devi, Bhakti Devi, Vrinda Devi Ki Jai, Jai Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai, Jai Harinam Sankirtan Yagya Ki Jai, Scientific Sankirtan Yagya Ki Jai, Bhakti Vedanta Institute Kijai, Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Institute Kijai, Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Mutt Kijai, Nitai Bora Premanandi, Hari Hari Hari, Jai Shumaki Umidevi Dasi Kijai, Jai Bhakti Linda Kijai, Hare Krishna. Sri Pad Krishna Kesha Prabhu Kijai. Jai Guru Dev. Dhanava Pranam Siri. Dhanava Pranam Prabhu. Dhanava Pranam Didi.